subscribe tag tv youtube channel and press the notification button Good evening. Welcome to South Asia Newsline. I'm Yeshi Chanzo. Here are the top stories we are tracking for you on Tuesday, the 8th of March. Indian economy picking pace after pandemic, says Prime Minister Modi. Opposition submits no confidence motion against Pakistan Prime Minister Imran Khan. And Forex staff Sri Lanka sets local rupee exchange rate at 230 per dollar. And now for all the details. Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi on Tuesday said that the country's economy is picking pace thereby reflecting fundamentals and reforms of the government of India. Speaking at a post budget webinar in capital New Delhi he asked financial institutions to come out with innovative and futuristic financing as well as risk management ideas to fund the emerging needs of the economy India's Prime Minister Narendra Modi on Tuesday said that the Indian economy has once again gained momentum after the COVID-19 pandemic and emphasized the need to consider ways to reduce dependence on other countries by exploring different models of financing developmental projects addressing a post budget webinar modi stated that implementation of green financing is the need of the hour to meet net zero carbon emissions target by 2070 he asked financial institutions to consider risk management systems to support new futuristic ideas to meet the emerging needs of the economy bharat ki arthavyavastha phir se gati pakad rahi hai ये हमारे आर्थिक फैसलों और हमारी अर्थव्यवस्था की मजबूत बुनियाद का प्रतिबिंब है ऑन ट्यूजडे इंडियन शेयर्स एक्सटेंडेड देयर लॉसेस एज अ स्टीप राइज इन ऑयल प्राइजेस फैन फियर्स ऑफ रन अवे इन्फ्लेशन एंड स्लोइंग इकोनॉमिक ग्रोथ विद ऑयल प्राइजेस ऑलरेडी हिटिंग देयर हाईएस्ट सिंस 2008 मॉस्को वॉर्न्ड अ वेस्टर्न बैन ऑन रशियन ऑयल इंपोर्ट्स अमिड द कॉन्फ्लिक्ट विद यूक्रेन could only more than double the price to $300 a barrel India is the world's third largest importer of crude oil and rising prices push up the country's trade and current account deficit while hurting its currency and fueling inflation In news from Pakistan the opposition submitted a no confidence motion against Pakistan's prime minister Imran Khan in the national assembly on Tuesday Lawmakers including PMLN parties Maryam Aurangzeb and PPP's Shazia Murry submitted the no trust motion and requisition for a session to the secretariat signed by a total of 86 lawmakers reports suggested the move came as thousands of supporters of opposition PPP rallied on Tuesday to demand PM Khan to resign accusing him of mismanaging the economy Opposition leaders say Khan has lost public support as he struggles with high inflation and a rising current account deficit. Khan rejects the accusations and has responded to economic problems with cuts in fuels and electricity prices while rejecting calls to step down. Khan had earlier won a no confidence vote last year by 6 votes. Pakistan's next general election is due by 2023. Moving on Former Prime Minister of Pakistan administered Kashmir Raja Farooq Haider Khan has raised objections over attempts to alter the status of Gilgit Baltistan and turn the region into Pakistan's fifth province. He said Islamabad has no rights to bring about such changes as Gilgit Baltistan is a disputed territory. Raja Farooq Haider Khan the former prime minister of Pakistan administered Kashmir has condemned plans to turn Gilgit Baltistan into Pakistan's fifth province holding a press conference Raja Farooq a senior PMLN leader said Pakistan has no rights to bring about such changes as Gilgit Baltistan is a disputed territory Reports suggest Pakistan Prime Minister Imran Khan is expected to announce provisional provincial status to Gilgit Baltistan on Pakistan Day on March 23rd. 
A group of senators had also submitted a bill in this regard in the parliament this month, proposing amendments in the constitution to turn the region into a province. Albata, jo aini jo dhancha banaya ja raha, us par hamay khilaf hai. Ham ye karte hain ki Gilgit Baltistan ko Azad Shir ki tarz ka jo hai, wo aini diya jaye, ekhtiyar diya jaye, aur balki Azad Shir ko sabhi zyada kiya jaye. और कौंसल को जो है ना वहाँ पर उसी तरह से रखा जाए जैसे आजाद कश्मीर के अंदर इसलिए कौंसल की मौजूदगी में Activists have blamed China has been lobbying Pakistan to bring the illegally occupied region under its legal jurisdiction to protect its investments which are part of the China Pakistan Economic Corridor or CPEC New Delhi has repeatedly conveyed to Islamabad that Gilgit Baltistan is an integral part of India and Pakistan has no local standing on territories illegally and forcibly occupied by it Moving on, a United Nations report on Monday showed that nearly 400 civilians have been killed in attacks in Afghanistan since the Taliban takeover, more than 80% of them by a group affiliated to Islamic State, underscoring the scale of the insurgency faced by the new rulers. It covers the period from August 2021 to the end of February and said that 397 civilians were killed mostly in a series of attacks by the Islamic State Khorasan group. The UN High Commissioner for Human Rights, Michelle Bachelet, said on Monday that nearly 400 civilians have been killed in attacks in Afghanistan since the Taliban takeover, more than 80% by a group affiliated to Islamic State, underscoring the scale of insurgency faced by the new rulers. It is the first major human rights report since the Taliban seized power from the former US-backed government in August in a move that triggered deep concerns about a broader rollback of rights for women, journalists and others. Bachelet in a speech introducing the report to the top rights body in Geneva said 397 civilians were killed mostly in a series of attacks by the Islamic State Khorasan or ISIS-K. While the decline in hostilities has seen a sharp de decrease in civilian casualties, the human rights situation for many Afghans is of profound concern. From 15 August 2021 to 15 February 2022, UNAMA and OICHR documented at least 1,153 civilian casualties, including 397 deaths. Several suicide and non-suicide attacks were perpetrated by ASKP against Shia Muslims, mostly from the Hazara ethnic group. ISIS-K, which first appeared in eastern Afghanistan in late 2014, is thought to have spread in the wake of the Taliban takeover and is blamed for several suicide attacks in recent months. In the same speech, Bachelet said that Taliban rulers had curtailed women's rights and freedoms. She called for women to be allowed to fully participate in public life. A senior Afghan diplomat from the former government described a deteriorating human rights situation in his country. Meanwhile, the Taliban government in Afghanistan issued a statement on the International Women's Day claiming they are committed to addressing the plight of Afghan women. Under their previous rule from 1996 to 2001, the hardline Islamist Taliban barred women and girls from education. They say they have since changed. Sri Lanka's central bank has set the exchange rate limit of the local currency to the dollar at 230 rupees in the latest bid to encourage remittances as the country's foreign reserves have dwindled to record lows of 2.36 billion US dollars. The economic crisis has left the government struggling to pay for imports including food, medicine and fuel. Sri Lanka's central bank on Monday set the exchange rate limit of the local currency to the dollar at 230 rupees in a bid to encourage remittances, a major source of foreign exchange which has dwindled to record lows of 2.36 billion US dollars, leaving the government struggling to pay for imports including food, medicine and fuel. It has become an everyday affair for people to queue up at petrol stations across the country as the fuel shortage has hit the public transportation sector and a shutdown of multiple power plants has led to rolling power cuts, sometimes lasting more than seven hours a day. Gamu Vijayratne, the head of the country's private bus owners association, said that from Tuesday, 
only 25% of association's buses could be deployed due to the fuel shortage. Amid the forex crisis, now even the cooking gas supplies are reportedly drying up, with some vendors complaining they have not received a shipment in a week. In the midst of the deepening crisis, President Gotabaya Rajapaksa had on March 3 appointed new ministers for energy and power in a snap cabinet reshuffle. The rupee devaluation comes as the island nation has to also repay debts of about $4 billion this year. A farmer turned inventor in southern India has developed a self-made device that he calls a tree scooter, through which one can scale the trees up and down with ease. Consisting of a small German motor from chainsaw maker still, a rudimentary seat and a set of wheels, the scooter helps to regularly scale areca palms to harvest beetle nuts, also commonly called areca nuts in India. Fifty-year-old farmer Ghanapati Bhatt puts on a harness getting ready to harvest beetle nuts at the top of a towering palm tree. Within few seconds, he has ascended the 20-meter or 65-feet tall tree, all with the help of a self-made device that he calls a tree scooter. Consisting of a small German motor from chainsaw maker still, a rudimentary seat and a set of wheels, the scooter helps Bud to regularly scale areca palms in the coastal town of Mangaluru to harvest beetle nuts, also commonly called areca nuts in India. Ganapati said he started work on his invention in 2014 due to his advancing age and as he was unable to find cheap labor who can climb the Eureka palms. This machine is a very important thing to do with the machine. It is a very important thing to do with the machine. It is a very important spray to do with the machine. It is a very important thing to do with the machine. Ganapati spent around 4 million Indian rupees, that is 52,824 US dollars, in research and development, eventually taking four years before his engineer partner and him had a working prototype. The intrepid inventor said he has so far sold more than 300 of the three scooters, which cost 62,000 Indian rupees. Other farmers are keen to use a scooter which can increase their productivity. One scooter can easily harvest more than 300 areca palms in a day, said Bhatt, compared with up to 100 trees per day by using the traditional manual climbing method. India is the world's biggest producer of beetle nuts, with an output of 1.2 million tons in 2020-21. Much of this crop is produced along the southern coastal states of Karnataka and Kerala. International Women's Day is observed every year on the 8th of March to celebrate womanhood and stand out for their rights and gender equality. On this occasion, we bring you a story of a sole female cab driver in India's hill town of Shimla and glimpses of the celebrations across the country. Have a look. Exemplifying a trail of courage and self-dependency of women, Menakshi Negi, a sole female cabbie in India's northern Shimla, has been into driving profession for the past four years and drives around tourists across the hill town, a major tourist destination in India. As women across the world celebrate International Women's Day, Menakshi has a message for all. She says women should not be categorized they can do anything and everything. Every year, March 8 is celebrated as International Women's Day to celebrate the cultural, political and socio-economical achievements of women. जहाँ तक मैं टैक्सी लाइन की बात करूँ तो आप कैटेगराइज मत कीजिए कि हाँ ये जेंट्स का है ये लेडीज का है आज कुछ भी काम है लेडीज आगे हैं और आप ये मत सोचिए कि हमने हम नहीं कर सकती हैं तो आइए अगर हिम्मत दिखाइए अपने लिए अपने आप को प्रूव कीजिए Meanwhile, displaying tremendous potential of Nari Shakti or women's strength, female contingents of Indo-Tibetan border police were seen patrolling the India-China border in northeastern Arunachal Pradesh alongside their male counterparts. 
to mark the occasion, student artists in eastern Odisha made an 8 feet long sand artwork at Puri Beach. International Women's Day emerged from labor movements in North America and Europe at the turn of the 20th century. The day was first celebrated by the United Nations in the year 1975. Well, that's all we have for you from South Asia this evening. Now our viewers can watch the show on SouthAsianewsline.com. You can also visit us on Facebook.com slash AsiaNewsline and follow us on Twitter at AsiaNewsline. That's all in tonight's edition. We will see you same time tomorrow. Good night. Subscribe Tag TV YouTube channel and press the notification button.